In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, amen. Continuing a series of sermons on madness, I hope this is my last. Those who are ignorant of history are doomed to repeat it. I mentioned this in one of my last sermons, and today, in order that this well-known saying not have to apply to us, I'm going to go over uh, the history of the past hundred years of the United States, specifically regarding unethical medical experimentation on American citizens by official U.S. government agencies. It's not a pleasant topic for me to talk about. I don't like having to talk about such matters, uh, but I feel compelled because I'm not hearing it from the sources uh, that we should be. And so knowing, knowing what has happened in the past gives us something to compare the present with, right? What is happening now? Well, what's happened in the past? What are medical experts saying now? What have they said in the past? Right? Comparing the two, being better informed enables us to think for ourselves, to ask better questions, demand reasonable answers from our government, medical experts, and so on. And so this information, I'll give you a summary here before we go into it, I got all of this from the public domain. What I'm about to read, this is a Wikipedia entry. I, I want you to know that. This is not like conspiracy theory stuff. You type in on Google, unethical experimentations in the United States, well, don't do that. You'll be horrified. Uh, but it's been terrible. And this is, what, this is out there. This is public information. Beginning in the early 1900s, the U.S. government, in conjunction with dozens of state and private agencies, conducted illegal and unethical testing on the citizens of the United States. Many of these tests were performed on children, the sick, the mentally disabled, and often under the guise of medical treatment. Experiments included exposure to harmful biological substances, infections of toxic, uh, injections of toxic and radioactive chemicals into uninformed subjects, surgical experiments, interrogation and torture, tests involving mind-altering substances, and a wide variety of other experiments, leaving many test subjects with deadly or debilitating diseases. Most of these experiments were sponsored by government agencies, including the CIA, the United States military, the CDC, and many other private corporations involved in military or governmental activities. These human research programs were highly secretive. Those who are ignorant of history are doomed to repeat it. We are told over and over again these days, trust the science, trust the experts. Uh, well, pardon me, because I don't trust the experts or their science. Because I know the past. I know my history. And I know what previous experts have done. And I know how they got previous science. This is what knowing our history does for us. It enables us to think for ourselves. So we're going to go into some of these, some of these experiences specifically. And like I said, I'm sorry to have to do this to you, but we need to know the truth. So in 1932, there was the uh, Tuskegee syphilis experiment. This refers to a clinical study conducted between 1932 and 1972 in Tuskegee, Alabama, by the U.S. Public Health Service. In this experiment, 400 poor black men suffering from that particular disease were lied to by researchers. They were told that they would receive treatment, but in fact, these researchers simply wanted to track the progress of debilitation. There was no effective treatment at the time. The experiment was started in 1932, but by 1947 there was, and researchers continued the program anyway. They could have given these men penicillin. They could have cured them from this disease, but they're like, you know, we're so far along, we want to keep tracking what the disease does to them. By the end of the study in 1972, 28 of the original 400 men had died directly from the disease. 100 were dead from complications related to the disease. 
40 of their wives had become infected with the disease, and 19 of their children were born with congenital cases of the disease. This all could have been prevented from happening, but it was intentionally not prevented because they wanted the medical research. In fact, the only reason the study was discontinued in 1972 was because information was leaked to the press, and there was such a public outcry that the researchers were forced to stop. But over the course of 40 years, all manner of program directors, technicians, and medical personnel, nobody said anything. Nobody stopped it. The Chicago malaria experiment. In the 1940s, at the Illinois State Hospital, the U.S. Department of Medicine, in conjunction with the Army and the U.S. State Department, oversaw the deliberate injection of malaria into healthy psychiatric patients so that doctors could test the effectiveness of experimental medical treatments. These psychiatric patients were not informed, nor did they give their consent. What were they told? Trust your medical experts. The Vanderbilt Nutrition Study. After, immediately after World War II, researchers at Vanderbilt University gave 829 pregnant mothers uh, what they were told were vitamin drinks. These were to improve the health of their babies. In reality, the mixtures contained radioactive iron, and researchers wanted to determine how fast the radioisotope crossed into the placenta. Four of the women's babies died from cancer as a result of the experiment, and the women themselves experienced rashes, bruises, anemia, hair and tooth loss, and cancer. It gets worse. In 1957, the United States Atomic Energy Commission was involved in atmospheric nuclear explosions in Nevada, which were later determined to have released enough radiation to have caused anywhere from 11,000 to 200,000 cases of excess cancer among U.S. citizens who had been exposed to this fallout. So what did the Atomic Energy Commission do about it? They knew people had been exposed to this radiation. They knew that it was harmful to them. Rather than warn people about it, they decided to study the effects of radiation. And so in a secret document dated April 17, 1947, uh, entitled Medical Experiments in Humans, it was stated, No document ought be released which refers to experiments with humans that might have an adverse reaction on public opinion or result in legal suits. Documents covering such field work should be classified secret. At the same time they issued this secret document, the uh, Atomic Energy Commission instructed the Public Health Service to tell citizens suffering from radiation that it was due to neurosis. Uh, women with, women with, with uh, cancer, hair loss, and burned skin were told they were suffering from housewife syndrome. And the public health service complied. They didn't warn people. They didn't tell them how to get treatment. They followed the orders to lie. The result led to between 1,000 to 20,000 unnecessary deaths. It gets worse. In 1950 the CIA initiated Project Bluebird. In this experiment, which included over 7,000 U.S. military personnel, uh, they were uh, operated on or uh, experimented upon without knowledge or consent. Researchers used a wide variety of psychoactive substances, including LSD, heroin, cocaine, PCP, and ether, in addition to hypnosis and forced addictions. The goal of Project Bluebird was to reduce the test subjects to a vulnerable state in order to achieve complete psychological manipulation. Researchers wanted to answer this question. Can we get control of an individual to the point where he will do our bidding against his will and even against fundamental laws of nature such as self-preservation? This was uh, for the intelligence community. This was for the purposes of espionage, spy work, completely unethical. And these experiments were carried out on these uninformed military personnel without their consent at the Edgewood Arsenal in Maryland. And years after these experiments, more than a thousand soldiers suffered from severe illnesses, 
including depression, epilepsy, and many of them attempted suicide. I wish I could stop here, but Project Bluebird um, continued. In 1953, the CIA placed multiple interrogation and mind control programs under the direction of a single program known as MKUltra. Uh, this came after the CIA director, Alan Dulles, complained about not having enough human guinea pigs on which to try out these extraordinary techniques. The MK Ultra project received over $25 million in government funding and involved hundreds of experiments on human subjects at 80 different institutions within the United States. Building upon the evil knowledge gained from other programs, the purpose of MK Ultra was thus to depattern individuals, erase their mind and memories, and then rebuild their personality in a manner completely up to the researcher. One of the medical doctors conducting these experiments requested from the CIA any information they could find regarding threats, coercion, imprisonment, deprivation, humiliation, torture, brainwashing, black psychiatry, and hypnosis. Patients were put into drug-induced comas for up to 88 days, subjected to high-voltage electric shocks, and forced to listen to repeated hypnotic messaging for up to 20 hours per day. The directors of the CIA knew very well what was going on, and they knew very well what would happen if this activity was discovered, and so in a 1957 Inspector General report, it was stated, Precautions must be taken to conceal these activities from the American public. The knowledge that the agency is engaged in unethical and illicit activities would have serious repercussions in political and diplomatic circles. These MK Ultra experiments continued from 1953 to 1973 until the CIA finally decided to end the program before it was discovered. It's hard to hide 20 years of torturing your own citizens. So they tried to cover it up, but it was discovered and it was a huge public scandal. There are probably some parishioners who recall the two congressional hearings that followed, the Church Report and the Rockefeller Commission. So if you want to know more about uh, this program, MKUltra, uh, you can look those up. Uh, I encourage you not to unless you want to be horrified. Uh, these are not conspiracy theories. These are facts. This kind of thing actually happened in the United States. They make science fiction movies out of this kind of stuff. That's why it's important to know our history. This really happened. Authorities have lied in the past. The government has lied in the past. They have knowingly cost people their lives. People say it could never happen here. It has happened here. It can happen again. If you think it can't, you don't know history. No institution is above lying to us. Not the government, not the CDC, not the WHO, and we must accept this as a possibility. We must accept it is possible that we could be deceived. It is possible that people could succumb to original sin. They could succumb to the lust for power, to greed, to avarice. How much do you think your life is worth to the CEO of a company when a billion dollars is on the line. And there's this tendency, there's a tendency in human nature not to want to accept reality when it contradicts authority. Imagine in the 1940s, trying to tell people suffering from radiation sickness you're being lied to. Look at your symptoms, look at the burns, look at the hair loss, look at the cancer, this is radiation. No, this is housewife syndrome. Turn on the news, turn on the radio, look at the newspaper. They wouldn't all lie to us. I, this can't be true. That is human nature. We have to keep in our minds. If, if, if we have to accept there's a possibility, uh, we could be lied to so that we can accept reality when we start to see it happening. Now, it was, it was a good in the 1970s. Uh, it was very good that the media, there were hundreds and hundreds of different media institutions, different organizations, different corporations, and they were all vying with each other to be the best, the first to report the news, the, the most accurate, whatever it may be. 
If you weren't accurate in news, uh, you know, you, you get uh, outdone by another company. But imagine what if there wasn't hundreds of media organizations? What if there were only six? What if there were six conglomerate corporations that owned every single media station out there? That's the case right now, these days. CNN, NBC, CBS, ABC, Time Warner, what is it, uh, uh, Fox News, six corporations own everything. Six people are making the decision on the information everybody gets. Here's a series of questions. What if, what if these six corporations that owned every single media station also owned pharmaceutical companies that had a financial interest in conducting experiments? What if these six corporations received large grants and tax incentives from the U.S. government who was conducting experiments? What if the CEO of a large corporation had a huge financial interest in the results of some experiment? And the CEO decided to grant hundreds of millions of dollars as a grant to media stations. What if? Know your history and know your recent history. These are not what if scenarios. In fact, there's a bulletin entry today. The bulletin entry is on this very thing. CEO last year uh, gave 250 million to media organizations. I'm not going to say which CEO, but the gates of hell will not prevail. <laughs> what happens when a country turns its back on God? Uh, it doesn't abandon God, it replaces him. That's just like Lucifer. It wasn't enough for Lucifer to disobey God. Lucifer wanted to take his place. And that's what we're seeing today. Well, I said it earlier, trust the science, trust the experts. That's not science. That's faith. Believe the experts. Trust us. Play, put your faith in us. No argumentation, no hard questioning, no scrutiny, just trust. What we are being asked, essentially, is to render under the government and the medical communities a pious submission of our mind and will. Don't ask questions, don't resist, believe what we tell you, do what we tell you. And this is a point, that gets to a point about misinformation that is extremely disturbing. We should be aware of this. Um, YouTube censors videos, as we all know. And I looked up, why? What are, the, what are the, their criteria for censoring videos? One of them is anything which contradicts an official statement from the World Health Organization or local authorities. If you contradict local authorities, their official statement, that's misinformation. So let's go back to the 1940s and the 1950s. If you contradicted the Atomic Energy Commission, misinformation, you would have been silenced. You contradicted the medical experts at the Chicago Malaria Institute, misinformation, you would have been silenced. That would have been the truth. Implicit in this statement, this misinformation policy, uh, 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 that if, if you say anything against these organizations, uh, the implicit statement is that these organizations can neither deceive nor be deceived. These organizations are uh, all omnipotent all-knowing and they're all good. Your government could never lie to you. We could never do that. They would never take advantage of you. That's, that's what people are being conditioned to believe by the media, by this misinformation policy. You've contradicted the CDC. Therefore, you must be wrong. It's treated like blasphemy. It's what happens when a society rejects God. They take his place. So, in closing, I want to give one of the bioethical principles of the Catholic Church. And that is informed consent. Persons receiving medical treatment have the right to know what is involved, what are the risks, and they are free to refuse. And that is my fundamental message. You do not have to consent to unwanted medical treatment. No government agency, no religious leader can force you against your will. If you suspect with good reason that you're being asked to participate in a worldwide medical experiment, do not participate. Do not repeat history. Know your history. 
God is our savior and no one else. God alone is all good, all knowing, all just, and all merciful. Only God can never deceive or be deceived. Trust in him alone, not in the government, not in the media, not even in church leaders who are increasingly abandoning church doctrine. God bless you all. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.